Hey guys, this is Cyril Jeet, your best friend in business and today I'm going to show you how to set up Amazon SES to work with Sendster and you already know that Amazon SES is the cheapest way to send emails. You can send 1000 emails for literally a dollar and combined with Sendster, it's going to make your email marketing bill very, very inexpensive, less than one tenth of what you're spending right now. So what we need to do is we need to integrate it using an SMTP setup. I've got one of my accounts already set up over here. I'm going to show you how to start from scratch. So the first thing you need to do is of course go to aws.amazon.com and you need to log in if you haven't created an account yet. Create an account, sign in, put in your credit card details so that Amazon can bill you when needed and then go to SES. So in search, just look for SES and you will find Amazon Simple Email Service. That's what SES stands for. When you click on it, you'll be taken to a page like this one. So you've got it over here and you've got a section over here that says send your first email with the button create identity and that's what you need to do first because whenever you send out an email, it has to go from certain email, right? So, so for example, if I want to mail you, I'm usually using my email address on technicforce.com and you receive that email. So you will need to create an email address to send the mails from and that is called an identity. It's a domain, subdomain or email address. So what I recommend is you set up a domain as an identity type because when you create a domain, you can send emails from any email address on that domain. For example, my domain is technicforce.com. So I can send you emails if I verify my domain from any address on that domain like abc.technicforce.com or jeet at technicforce.com and that will work. So definitely verify the domain. So you'll need to put in your domain name over here. So for me, it's usually technicforce.com. Click on it and then just assign default configuration set so that it's easy to do. And to verify the domain, you need to have DKIM based domain verification. And configuring DKIM is not difficult. There is even a guide over here that shows you how to do it. Basically, it's just creating some entries in the DNS of the domain that you have booked. Now, if you worked with domains before, you already know how to set up DNS details like CNAME and all. So we want to go that route because it's actually easier. So click on advanced DKIM settings over here and then click on easy DKIM. You can see that it says to set up easy DKIM, you have to modify the DNS settings for your domain. So the DNS settings can be modified sometimes on the domain name provider. So if you got your domain from a provider like Namecheap or any other domain provider, you can modify the domain settings over there. Or if you've already hosted the domain somewhere, like, you know, it's a website, it's got things on it, then you would need to go to the hosting provider and change the domain settings. I'm going to show you that setup in a moment. Then you need to set up the, the signing key strength. It says 2048 is the recommended way. Perfect. We just click on that and it says publish DNS records so root 53. And this is only valid if you got your domain from an Amazon service called root 53. So if you didn't do that, which is quite likely, just don't select it. Then you can enable the DKIM signature. That's perfectly fine. And then once you're done, just take a look at everything and then click on create identity. So in my case, the identity technicforce.com already exists. So I'm just gonna use technicforce.org, create identity. And here we go. The identity status is now verification pending because we haven't set up DKIM details yet and you can find them over here. We've got three different CNAME entries that we have to add to our DNS record and I'm going to show you now how to do that. And now I'm logged into my hosting. Your hosting may look a little bit different based on the control panel that you have access to, but it will definitely have a DNS system. So click on DNS and you will see all the DNS entries that exist already for this website. What you want to do is you want to click on add record over here. That's going to show you an option that looks like this with several record types. You want to click CNAME and then let's go back to Amazon to get our details. So we've got three CNAME entries. Let's just click on this icon to copy and then come back over here. 
paste it and you can see that in my particular hosting the domain name is already appended so if it's the same which is quite usual you need to remove the domain name because it's already here so just remove that part and then in canonical name again go back to this amazon website copy it and paste it over here so that's one entry down click on add record again take the second entry it's a c name and then remove the domain if it's already shown in your uh, website if it's already showing in your domain entry system come back pick up the dns record too and okay then we've got two down add record then pick the third one c name the same process again copy it if you want you can select it and copy it too but this button makes it easier here we go so all three c name entries have been done you can see over here all three of them are here then you just need to update it because they're not updated yet so just scroll to the top and you will see this update button click on update and the dns records will be finalized like this one so when you go back to aws now you will see the verify button over here which says verify verification pending now amazon can take up to 72 hours to get these details and verify it so just look back the second day typically it's done by the second day so come back and check the second day and the verification should be changing from pending to verified and then you will have something like this if if i go into my verified identities i can see in fact technic force org the new the domain that i put in it's already verified so it didn't take that long after all you can see the verified tick it just took minutes honestly and now you're ready to send emails using this identity amazon ses will accept any email which is on this domain so if we create a domain called tech called technicforce.com i can send my emails like my email at technicforce.org sorry and amazon ses will accept it but your work is not done yet because you also have to set up the smtp details that you will put in sendster so when you click on create smtp you can put in the smtp title the name that you want to give it for example amazon ses you have to enter the sender name and again it could be your my email at technicforce.org that's the domain we verified this is actually the from email here is the from name so i can just put in my name and whatever the name is and the same pattern over here and in reply and in the host you need to put in the smtp credentials for amazon for that just click on smtp settings and you can see this is the smtp endpoint whatever it displays for you copy it and paste it in the host section and the port number is usually 587 it's kind of pre-configured so if you look here it will be pre-configured you can keep it to 587 encryption can be tls that's just fine now the username and password you still need to get for that we need to create an authentication identity and that's what i'm going to show you next to create an smtp credential that works with this just click on create smtp credentials over here it's going to open a new tab and you will have a ready-made policy set up for you now amazon access is actually managed through policies and it actually uh, requires some work but here it's set up for you this permission policy gives the user permission to access aws ses so this can be used to send out your email and you want to give it a username so i would typically name it like smtp technic force org you can name it whatever you want it's an identifier that you need to have click on create user and then you already got your SIM username, your SMTP username, and your password. So take your SMTP username, come back to Sensta, put it over here, and then come back to create user, click on show password, copy it, come back to Sensta, put it here, and then click on save. If you want to test SMTP, you can do that too. So we'll do a little bit of a test. So I'm just going to put in my test email. So I'm just going to send it to myself. Once it's done, click on check SMTP. And you can see this is the SMTP transaction record. 
and the mail has been successfully sent. One thing you want to make sure is whatever email address you use to send the emails should exist on your domain and you should be able to receive the email because sometimes ESPs like Gmail and others will verify that the email address actually exists. Also, Amazon is going to send you any delivery failures to that email address so that you can remove them from your list and keep your list always active. Now, it has got some tools that makes things easier for you. So you get a suppression list, which is a list of all the email addresses which are bouncing and Amazon will not send the emails to these addresses and you can remove them from your list. You also get We've also got the reputation metrics and I think this is very important. You should take a look at it at least every day, once every day if you're sending emails actively. It got things like bounce rate, which is how many of your emails are bouncing, sending to addresses that don't exist. It should be below 5%. If it's above 5%, you will get a warning. And if it goes above 10%, you get your account canceled. So you should never, never send emails to email addresses that don't exist make sure your emails are clean your list is clean and again Sendster has a tool to clean your list so make sure you use it for example in my account the bounce rate is 0.2 percent which is quite below the acceptable level next you've got the complaint rate are people complaining about your emails so it should be preferably below 0.2 percent which is what we are at now it's below 0.2 percent above that you get a warning and if you keep going above that consistently and you go above 0.5 percent your account is at risk so you need to make sure that these parameters are correct that's why Amazon is great for people who do permission-based marketing, people who send emails to, to others who actually sign up to their lists. So it's great for that. But if you're not doing that, then it's not going to work. Now, so this was exactly how Amazon SES works. Now, depending on your setup, there may be some other things that you might need to do. Make sure you look at the instructions carefully. There is a lot of documentation, but this video should be enough to get you started and help you send your first email. This is Cyril Cheat signing off.